Imposter syndrome. That's what we're gonna talk about today. Woohoo! If you really knew me, you would know that I hit start and stop on this recorder here probably a dozen times already today. And it is day 54, 55 in the Making Hope Happen series. And today's topic is near and dear to my heart. And that's part of the reason why I've started and stopped it so many times is because it's there's been some hesitation there because it's gonna require that I be a little vulnerable. And also it's a topic that I care deeply about. And so I didn't want to um, screw up. I didn't want to mess it up, you know? And so I've decided that on this particular video, I'm just going to hit go and I'm not going to allow myself to stop. I'm just going to see what happens. And it's my hope that it can provide you value in your journey, whatever it is that you're going after in your life. And, um, so we'll just get started. Today's topic is imposter syndrome, imposter syndrome. That is today's topic. And if you've experienced imposter syndrome, you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that imposter sy syndrome steals joy and it sabotages performances and it closes doors to opportunities. Imposter syndrome is a real thing and we're going to talk about it today. And we're also going to connect it back to Lanny Basham's idea and his mental management model. We're going to see the link there and then we're going to wrap up today by anchoring it in some B BJ Fogg wisdom from his book, Tiny Habits to help us start to overcome imposter syndrome. But I think the mental management model from Lenny Basham is going to help us see where it's showing up and, and what we can maybe do about it. But first, imposter syndrome. What the heck is it? Well, imposter syndrome, it refers to this very, very personal internal experience that takes place when we as imposters might achieve something or we might get accolades from others or others might hold us in high self or high esteem and we don't think it's deserving. In often cases, it is deserving, but somewhere inside of us, we don't think it's deserving that if they only knew that I'm not as capable as they think I am, if they only knew all the things that I missed on that particular project, even though the project was awesome, if they only knew all of the things I skipped there, then they wouldn't hold me in such high self, high esteem, right? And if they only knew how much work I still have on being and becoming my best self, they wouldn't want me to be a VP. They wouldn't want me to lead that project. They wouldn't want me to be the director of that particular area if they only knew. That is imposter syndrome. And personally, I have experienced imposter syndrome in relationships that I didn't feel like I was deserving, working with mentors, not feeling like I belonged in that particular group. I've also experienced it in my career where I didn't feel like I was deserving of particular leadership roles. I also have experienced it in sport where when I was in college, a lot of people don't know this, but when I uh, was finishing up my junior, I went to a junior college and played two years of softball and soccer there. And when I finished up my second year of softball, the head coach at the University of Washington called my home and left a message. And I did not return the call. <laughs> I did not return the call because of imposter syndrome. Like if she only knew uh, that I'm a fraud that, uh, you know, I got those awards within our division because I lucked out or it was just like easy pitching that day or something. Like if she only knew who I really was, she wouldn't want me to play at the University of Washington. I literally did not make the phone call back. Isn't that crazy? All because of imposter syndrome. And so it's such an important topic to me. And even right now, when I think about the river that I'm going across right now, you know, leaving endings, creating new beginnings, building new habits, and also the hero's journey that I'm on, answering the call to the adventure, the call to serve and, and make a bigger impact in the world through my work, through coaching and through videos like this. That has a lot of heaviness to it as well, that I'm starting to see that the skills might be there, the, the desire is there, um, although sometimes the desire wavers a bit, and I think the desire wavers a little bit because Lenny Basham's model, the self-image hasn't caught up to the skills and to the dreams, right? And so that, that self-image has to do with my imposter syndrome, that my identity has not kept up with the skills I've developed over the years as a professional coach and as a speaker, communicator, as a teacher. Uh, my identity hasn't caught up to the skills I've built and my identity 
has limited my dreams and goals and desires. And now I have an opportunity to step more fully into my skills and perform at my best and allow myself to have bigger dreams, bigger goals, bigger desires. And so in order for me to be able to practice Lanny Basham's mental management system and his model to perform at my best and to you know, create the conditions for those outcomes to just take care of themselves, that I become a coach who's making easily over 100K a year, coaching people to their best performance, that that's like me, that that's my identity. I'm gonna have to work on that identity. And so the imposter syndrome can keep me from those dreams, that imposter syndrome can keep me from having conversations that would be important conversations to be had. So I already started to apply this idea of imposter syndrome to Lenny Basham's work, the mental management system. Reminder, Lenny's mental management system, it's a system, it's a process to help us consistently show up as our best in work, in love, in energy, in the things that matter most to us. Again, our performance will not outperform our self-image. And even if you do momentarily, you're not gonna feel the joy of winning at something because you're always gonna feel like someone's gonna catch on to you, that you're a fraud, that you're an imposter. And you're not gonna be able to sustain it because the doubt is going to creep in, you're gonna get into your head and you're gonna stop performing the way you're capable and you're trained to perform. One more thing here is that when we think about the mental management system, we're not just talking about performance in sports or performance on a stage. We're talking about life, like how you can show up consistently as your best as a parent, as a spouse, as a leader, as a writer, as a YouTuber, as a coach, you name it. Performing at your best more and more consistently is what this model is about. And those three circles, we wanna grow them simultaneously. They all work together. They're constantly communicating with one another. The conscious mind with the, with the self-identity, the self-image, the self-image being reinforced by your behaviors that you do every single day and what you focus on with your behaviors every single day. And then your behaviors, your performance are constantly being talked to by your conscious mind as well. An idea that came up for me around this imposter syndrome is that I feel like this is like a nervous system response for me. It's like this natural kind of trigger to get small whenever I win at something. And so it's really truly an identity that's beyond just my conscious identity. It's ingrained like in my cells of my body. An example of this was like last year, there was a situation where I had someone kind of come at me aggressively. And I, growing up in my situation that I grew up in, that aggressive behavior triggered in me like these childhood memories of kind of going into survival mode. And whenever, when I was a kid and someone specifically would come at me aggressively, I once tried, probably a handful of times as a kiddo, to come back aggressively and I always lost. I always lost. I either wasn't lovable or that was never quite there, wasn't good enough. And kind of my survival mechanism in that situation was to get small, to, to hide, to go away, to not be seen. And then that helped that other person's aggressive to start to come down, to start to dissipate. And so that was a, a trained kind of skill that I picked up as a kiddo. And so it's ingrained in my nervous system that when I feel that kind of conflict come up, even in an office space, that's not the same thing as when you were a kid, that natural kind of nervous system response comes up. And what was cool about last year when this happened is that instead of doing what I normally do of getting small, I actually in the moment felt myself start to turn away and get small. And in that moment, I trained myself to come back and stand in it. Now, I didn't say anything and I didn't probably protect myself as much as I maybe could have. I mean, as much as I would have liked to have in that moment. I'm gonna continue to develop this skill set as I go forward. Um, but in that moment, I stood in the discomfort. I stood in that aggression coming at me. And that was a positive thing because I made progress. I chunked it down and I did a small movement with my nervous system to show my nervous system that I'm not five anymore and I can handle this discomfort. And to me, that helped kind of enforce this new identity that I'm the kind of person that can stand in discomfort. Now, I may not 
got I am not quite to the point where I know how to deal with that yet always in those particular situations but at least I've made progress that I don't I don't shrink I don't get small from it I stayed towards it and stayed in it and I stood in that discomfort when it comes to imposter syndrome there's a couple elements to this that I'm seeing it show up for me one nervous system training is that staying open a little longer, noticing my nervous system start to take over and kind of the knee jerk reaction. What I wanna to get to training better at is, is reversing that knee jerk reaction, noticing that this danger kind of indicator that my nervous system is picking up on is actually a sign to lean in, Lori. This is an opportunity for you to bring your skills to the moment and you're totally capable of this. You're gonna be okay, you're gonna be safe, no one's gonna die, like you're gonna, you're gonna be all right. And so I'm, I'm retraining my nervous system to be able to kind of handle that discomfort. And when I get, you know, when I think about imposter syndrome specifically, when I get those accolades sometimes, my nervous system is to shut down. I was taught very, very young to not have an ego, to not really celebrate, like don't be a poor sport and celebrate big. So I always like celebrated super small. And I think there is like good lessons in that to, to be humble with your victory, to be a good winner. And at the same time, I was like not given an outlet to savor that in a way that was really, really productive. It was a really effective way to celebrate it that wasn't um, shaming, that wasn't shaming someone else's loss, but was still an opportunity for me to reinforce this identity that I'm the kind of person that can win, that I am skilled at this. And it's okay to be, be proud of yourself. Growing up, oftentimes the coaching that was taking place around me was what needs work a lot. Like that was the like the place to go was what needs work, what needs work. There was very little time spent on what was awesome and look at you go. Like that was that was mentioned, but it wasn't truly savored. And so they were kind of often, they're kind of stacked together in the same moment. And so it was, you never really got to, I never really got to create that identity upgrade. And today I'm actually super grateful that that all happened because now I'm in a position to be able to coach myself through this and to help others who had similar situations um, where no fault to the people around them who, who care about them. They, they just wanted to help them do great and, and play at their best, not realizing that what they were actually doing was sabotaging our performance and stealing the joy. So I'm super grateful for those experiences. So we're talking about imposter syndrome here. We're connecting it back to the mental management system by Lanny Basham. The imposter syndrome has to do with your self image. If you don't expect yourself to win, or if you expect yourself to win, but you're not deserving of it, you're gonna sabotage your performance and you're gonna steal your joy. How can we start to fix that? Well, one of the things that Lanny talks about is praise and positive reinforcement. And we really wanna praise ourselves when we do something good. We really wanna highlight that. We may still have another 20 miles to go in the marathon, but let's celebrate the fact that you've done six already. Like, come on, Lori. You don't have to wait to get to the end to help build that self-identity as you're making progress in the marathon of life, as you're making progress in your goals and your dreams and you're navigating that change. One of the things Brian Johnson teaches us in the Optimize program is to really truly celebrate it with, that's like me, that's like me. And whenever I miss the mark to use the opposite of it, which is that's not like me, that's not like me. You know, and then I can course correct what needs work, but really to truly savor it. And one of my favorite ideas actually comes from a habit book. And when we think about yourself, identity, your self image, it's really just the habit of you being you. That's what the self image is, is you being you and it's a habit. What we want to do is change that habit about how you see yourself. One tool we can use comes from BJ Fogg in his habit building book, Tiny Habits. He says one of the most important things to do when building habits is to celebrate. And we want to learn how to effectively, skillfully celebrate our new behaviors. And when we do that, we're embodying it in our nervous system. We're building things in our brain that says, this is what we do when this situation occurs. This is what we do in this particular time of day with this particular person. And not only does it help us build the behavior habit, but when you consciously celebrate it and you put it in your body and you celebrate powerfully, you actually help yourself self-image increase too. It helps your self-image reinforce that I'm the kind of person that does that. Instead of focusing on the things that weren't quite as perfect as they could have been or focusing on the things that still need to be done, when we take the moment to skillfully celebrate and 
acknowledge the, the progress we've made and the performance that we've had, we help build the habit of showing up that way and we increase and strengthen our self image. So when it comes to skillfully celebrating, we skillfully celebrate ourselves right after it happens immediately. We say to ourselves, that's like me. That's like me. Every time I do one of these videos, that's like me. Every time my timer goes off at the 20 minute mark and I jump down and I do a burpee or I get up and I roll my shoulders, I say to myself, that's like me. That's like me to take care of my biology, knowing that if I want to perform at my best, high performance is really nothing more or nothing less than getting your biology to work for you and not against you, as Stephen Kotler told us. So we want to personally celebrate. But the other thing we want to do that I want to bring up today is celebrating others. And I have had so many people celebrate me and the progress I've made that it's really starting to help me build the habit of being a YouTuber and the identity to match it. And one thing particular that I got yesterday that I'm excited to share with you today. So yesterday I got a gift from somebody I used to work with who's been following along with the YouTube videos. And it came in this little bag and inside of it was this card and it says, believe in you. And inside she wrote, in the great words of Bon Jovi, you're halfway there. Congrats on hitting 50 days of making hope happen. I just wanted to reach out and let you know that you're making, uh, you are making more than just hope happen. You're inspiring me and many others to make a difference. Thank you for always rocking your socks off, rocking my socks off with all the amazing tools and knowledge you share. So here are some awesome socks for you to rock the rest of this journey. Cheers, Julie. I'll just say her first name so, you know. I don't know how many people are gonna watch this, but check out these socks I got. <laughs> they say, I, uh, they say, I am awesome on the toe. And then underneath, they also say awesome. So I think we can all agree, this is skillfully celebrating. And now, I, every time I put these on, I get to say, that's like me, 50 days of videos, 50 days of videos, that's like me, to show up consistently 50 days in a row. I'm building the performance habit, building the subconscious mind, I'm building the conscious mind, and I'm developing the self-image when I do that. Julie, thank you, you rock. Hey, thank you so much. And to everybody else out there who has offered a message of encouragement, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Drew, thanks for the videos. Paul, thanks for all the comments on every single one of them. Jen, thanks for watching them all and giving me a thumbs up. I love and appreciate you guys. Thanks for helping me step into my potential, increase my identity. I sincerely appreciate it. Think about you. Everybody's watching right now. Think about you. How's your identity? Does it match your dreams and goals? Does it match your skills and desires? Let's, let's help and support each other in overcoming those imposter syndromes. You are so much more capable than you know, and you are already doing it. Wherever you're at, you're already doing it. Believe that, trust that, step into it. Thanks for watching. That's just like you. Let's go change the world together. Have an awesome day. I'll see you tomorrow.